Welcome back to Elden Ring Lords Brigade Part 21. Today is Snowcron and Siofra Aqueduct. Now, if this is the first time you've watched any of our videos, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you have any tips of your own, put them in the tips comments so people can look over that later. But otherwise, we are at Fort Hay, and now, after doing the Redan Festival and beating Redan, there's a giant hole in the ground that we're going to go into, made by a meteor. Um, aye, okay, well. Anything to add, you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you would have known that a meteor had struck um, the lands between if you'd watched the cutscene after killing Radan, um, and the red mark that was made on your map by Blythe would have shown you that this is where you need to come. Now, that was added in a later patch, so on earlier patches, if somehow, miraculously, you're playing on an unpatched version of the game, the red mark won't appear. Um, but this is where you need to go. It's just to the... Uh, west of Fort Height. Now the first item, Golden Rune. And there's a few items scattered around on these ruined structures here. And this is the first time I think we've encountered the... Um, the Night Folk style ruins, the ones that are the Eternal Cities. So there's a few different enemy types that we'll encounter in here. There's Fallen Hawk Soldiers as well as the Silver Tears that you could see a couple of in the distance over there, but make this tricky jump, it's quite hard to land that, so if you die, don't worry, you're not far away from a grace, and you'll be grabbing the Ghost Flame Torch. What does that do? Ghost Flame Torch is a uh, light source, as with every other torch, as well as hitting enemies with it, since it has Ghost Flame, will deal magic damage and build up Frostbite. Cool. So, uh, yeah, we're just avoiding these... Um... Mercury enemies, I guess. Silver tears. Sure. Well, we picked we picked up a rune arc, and now we're gonna head along this like collapsed building. Uh, we've got a golden rune six. Ignore that scarab because it's just a a flask one. So if you kill the red scarabs, you get back up like a couple of heals or whatever. But we don't need to do that. So like we're not gonna do that. And now we're gonna head into this second big rune through the window. And we're just we're just picking up some items now. This is nothing too intensive. Guess methods. Yeah, it's five. mostly a straight line path from the entrance to the big hole to the first major grace, and then even beyond that to the first major boss of this area. Yeah, that that is true. It's just a straight line, so there's not a whole lot to commentate on. Uh, now, right here is the fallen hawk soldiers. Um, the uh, so we got a. Uh, Ghost, Ghost Glove Wart 3 there. I'm going to grab this grace. But the Fallen Hawk Soldiers, they can drop the Iron Spear, if they've got it. They can drop the Inverted Hawk Tower Shield, if they're using it. Uh, now, we're also going to do a hard right jump over this little bit here, because there's an item back here that's uh, pretty easy to miss. Smith and Stone 3, so nothing nothing too intensive, but yeah. Uh, they can also drop Spirit Flame Arrows and um, Dew Kissed Herba. And I that's mean, all that they drop. drop. That last drop's so pointless because you see that glowing green plant there? That's a Duke yep. And they're everywhere and they respawn when you sit at a grace. So why did they add that to their loot pool and just dilute it even further? Who knows? But yeah, we're just grabbing this stuff. We got the uh, Ghost Glove Wart Pickers Bell Baron 1. So that means we can buy Ghost Glove Wart from, well, some lower level Ghost Glove Wart from the Twin Main Husks if we give her that Bell Baron. Um, there's Somber Smith and Stone 4. We're, we're just going about getting some items. Um, we're not going to fight all these guys because they're not particularly threatening. They're only threatening if there's a lot of them in a small space. Otherwise, for the sake of speed and time, we are going to just be running past them and grab them. By all means, you fight them if you want, but you just don't really need to. Plus, if they whip out the Great Shield, they're a fucking pain in the arse. So, oh yes they are, and I cannot fucking <laughs> wait for the next couple of items we're going to pick up because we get my favourite Spirit Ash in the game. Oh yeah, it's boys time. So, I thought that they were going to be kind of extremely mid, but as it turns out, five guys with a great shield each um, is kind of incredibly amazing against certain enemies. Uh, it's never going to come close... There's the Great Shield Soldier Rassies. It's never going to come close to the overall usability of the Mimic tier, but there is indeed some bosses where <laughs> the boys is better than the Mimic tier, believe it or not. So, yeah, um, grab that because it does have uh, a couple of very interesting uses 
uh, throughout the game, I suppose. And it's just funny as well. Right? It really is. I love them so much. They're just so goofy. It's five guys with shields, and somehow that's better than, like, some of the fucking Remembrance bosses get folded by five guys with shields. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> So, picked up a ghost glove wart there from the bush. We also got a larval tier from the gazebo thing. Uh, you can take in the view. And remember, we also got a, a larval tier in the chapel before we picked up the boys as well. Should probably mention that. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty big item. We should definitely have mentioned that. So now, we're coming up to an interesting boss. Uh, I think probably everybody knows this tip by now. But this, we're about to fight. We're about to fight the mimic tier as a boss. So, this guy just comes in as you. But if you just don't have anything equipped, then he just comes in as just some fucking naked guy, right? So uh, if mean, you just come in nice and naked. So I can tell you a few interesting things about the Mimic tier as a fight. So you see how there's a silver blob on the floor there? If you're standing far enough away from it, the fight doesn't activate. And if you pull out something like a great bow, it only has about a thousand health that silver blob so if you use a great bow and you shoot it before it turns into you um which is by the way exactly what it did it copied what you have on you at the time um yeah you can just shoot the silver blob and it just dies the boss just dies instantly <laughs> you don't have to fight it um you can also put on the shabriri's woe talisman to make it take increased damage Likewise, you could do this with any of the other talismans that make it take increased damage, so any of the scorpion charms, the saw seals, anything like that. And for killing it, you get the silver tier mask and a couple of level tiers. The silver tier mask um, gives you plus 8 to your arcane, but lowers your physical damage. It's actually quite good if you need the, the stats buff in a pinch. But otherwise, uh, yeah, we just there's a hard cut there. That was just us putting our equipment back on, because you really don't need to see that. Um, now, running along this bridge, there is a scarab here. I think this shops a smith and stone four. Five. God, I'm fucking shit. But, yeah. Uh, 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 golden rune on the bridge. Pick that up. And um, there's also... Right, so there's a glove wart coming up that I swear I must have searched for 15 minutes. Right there. So, now... Uh, now <laughs> you don't need to go through the incredibly long process of trying to find that fucking thing. Um, and now uh, we are going to head under the bridge. Well, we're going to grab the grace first, but we're in a little bit which is similar to... Because um, this is the top part of Siofra River, essentially. So, similar to the bottom part, there's some fires that we need to light, and then that will unlock the boss, like the bottom part. Except somehow the enemies in this area are even more irritating because there's a red wolf here there is a fucking red wolf here that is true do we fight this one or uh, do we I ignore it like we did the one in leonia oh uh pass i guess we'll see but first thing we're gonna do is head on to the actual aqueducts we're gonna drop onto it um down here because otherwise you would take damage by falling onto it from too high up grab the items I that are hidden on here and do we go right to the end and drop down we do, we do. This is yet another bit of like exploration in Elden Ring that just feels like completely alien from the explora exploration that you'd get in like say Dark Souls, even even Dark Souls three, you wouldn't get anything like this. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna carefully drop down onto this ruined platform segment, and uh, then continue down to the bottom, where there's another couple items. I think there's like a bubble sorcery. So that's the clarifying horn charm. And a Smith and Stone too, and a Celestia will do. No, nope, uh, just I was just making stuff up apparently. Now where we are is um, we're slightly above the level of Shifra that had the Dragonkin soldier in it. Um, so if you remember back to that part, if indeed you watched that part, which you should have done, there are three levels. There's this upper level that we've just fast traveled to here, knock on the Eternal City. There's the lower level Shifra. And the middle level has the Dragonkin Soldier, and like with the bottom level, the top level has the sconces. I think there are six of them. That's the first, and we're going to make our way around, picking up the items and lighting the sconces as we go.
So this is the bit with the Red Wolf, and these enemies are definitely probably top 10 most irritating enemies in this fucking game. If you can avoid fighting this thing, I recommend doing so. Uh, probably just avoid picking up the, the items in this area. What, two Beast Blood and... I suppose the Smith and Stone 4 is pretty relevant. But, um... Otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm just not for fighting, like, ten wolves. Look, if it helps... I'm not putting myself through that. <laughs> I don't blame you. They do suck to fight. But if it helps, as you can see, it can come behind the tree. And it's pathing, like, it's patrolling AI will take it behind the tree from time to time. So if you do want that smithing stone for you, you can just wait for it to fuck off behind the tree and then go pick it up. True. Now, that was a tree nest lily that we just passed. There's also a, a couple up here, actually. So you should probably be picking up those little white flowers. Um, that is one of the few crafting items that we absolutely recommend picking up that I should have been picking up more of. Um, so that's on me. Uh, so that's Enchanted Shot, which I think is a better version of Mighty Shot for the bow, right? Yeah, that's spot on. Um, it does have a slight intelligence scaling. Um which means that if you're not investing in intelligence, you may end up getting better damage out of Mighty Shot, but it adds a small amount of magic damage and boosts range. If you use it in tandem with Dwelling Arrows, a big golden rune there, by the way, so well worth picking yep. up. Um, if you're using it in tandem with Dwelling Arrows and indeed the Horn Bow, which has innate magic damage on it, you can make Enchanted Shot hit incredibly hard considering you're using a bow. They don't have the best scaling, they don't have the best base damage, but using that combo, you can get some really respectable damage out of it. So, that's cool. Now, heading across that uh, that stone platform, I suppose you could say it is, um, be wary of the little jump that you have to do on Torrent. Be very, very wary, because I've twice killed myself to that fucking thing. One when I first played the game, and then the, the other time when I was doing the guide part of, like, trying to um, map all this shit out, so I just be careful of that stone platform and where your footing is with Torrent. Now, we also got a stone infant head, I think that's what that was. The ancestral infant's head, yeah. You saw the attack where um, the ancestral, the ancestor spirit can do it, and so can the larger singing ancestral followers, the ones that you can see emitting the blue aura there. Speaking of which, we're going to kill this to get a unique headpiece, the Shining Horn headband. Yep. But it has an attack where it sprays with the head. It was about to do it there. You have the ability to do that now. It does not do a lot of damage, um, but it does leave these little persistent pools of magic damage on the floor, which does scale with intelligence. So if you are an intelligence build, you don't have a lot of FP left. You can squeeze out a little bit of extra damage from whatever remaining FP you have. So uh, these ancestral followers have a number of drops. Um... So we're just picking up, so, so there's a few consumable items here. Uh, and to make a point, that Shining Horn headband, headband wasn't a random drop. That one drops it every time, specifically. Um, so the Ancestral Followers can drop the Jawbone Axe, Fur Raiment, Fur Leggings, the Great Horn Hammer, Dwelling Arrows, the Great Horned Headband, uh, Thin Beast Bones, and Budding Horn. And specifically, we got the Shining Horned Headband, not the Great Horned Headband. The Great Horned one is a random drop, uh, presumably from the ones that have Drina's Lily. Pick it up, but presumably from the ones that have the two bigger horns rather than the, the glittery one that we got. So there's a couple of cookery there, and um, we're, just, we're just grabbing the shite that's on the floor, I suppose. But now, instead of going up the stairs to the boss, we're going to go up and around following this cliff edge up because there's actually another bit of odd platforming that we have to do and uh, there's like an item way up top. I do, I do love quite... this about Elden Ring. Yeah, I was, I was going to say the exact same thing. It's nice that you, you have the ability to go to these places and they usually stash something worth finding in places like this. Like there, we got the mottled necklace. Was that the plus one version? Or was that I the base was. version? Um... Regardless, the Muttle Necklace boosts all of your resistances, so uh, Poison, Rot, Bleed, Frostbite, Madness, Sleep, it boosts all of them by a small amount. As with the Pearl Drake Talisman for your magical defenses, so Fire, Magic, Lightning, and Holy, that boosts all of your resistances, but by less than each of the individual talismans would. 
so we put on the Sacred Scorpion Charm over the Radigan Sword Seal. Uh, that way, because the Sacred Scorpion Charm makes you take more damage, so we don't want to use it in conjunction with the Radigan Sword Seal that also makes you take more damage. The Sacred Scorpion Charm increases our holy damage, and we've also put Sacred Blade um, on our sword because we're about to do another big deer enemy. We also just picked up a little gold packet, uh, a golden rune packet there. But yeah, back to the deer enemy again. Uh, so just the same thing as last time. This one has, I think, a slightly expanded move set. But otherwise, we're just going to be hitting this thing with Sacred Blades until it dies. <laughs> nice and easy. Yeah, anything that's weak to holy damage, Sacred Blades going to melt. So that's Cemetery Shades, Death Birds, um, and indeed the Ancestor Spirits. Now, you quite rightly said this one has an expanded move set. Um, what that means is, unlike the first one, this one has the ability to do a large area of effect heal that will damage you if you're too close to it. Um, I don't know if it manages to get it off. I think it will. So you will get to see what that looks like. Um, and it has this teleport here that will send it to one of the blue spirits you can see wandering around. There's little animal spirits. Whenever it teleports to one of them, it consumes it and gains a move based on the animal it consumed. So if it consumes a goat, it can roll at you. If it consumes a boar, it can charge. And if it consumes a spring hare, it can sort of bounce around. Um, it's hard to tell which one it's absorbed because oftentimes it teleports too far away for you to be able to see it. But um, you will... So I think it must have absorbed a boar there because it did a little head charge. Um, but, yeah, its move will depend on that. You will see what I mean if it gets to pull any of these moves off. The thing is, is as creative and cool as that is, um, sadly, I think the boss just dies too easily to uh, holy damage. However, as you saw there, its health regen attack regens an insane amount of health very, very quickly. So, so this is why Sacred Blade is uh, quite as good as it is, because, um, oh, there's its little uh, jumpy attack. That you mentioned, I think. No, that's not the one. Um, oh, is that if not it the absorbs one? a spring, no. If it absorbs a spring hair, it will bounce on its hind legs towards you, oh. and each bounce will do a little AOE of damage. Wow, um, hitting its head deals way more than fucking hell. And got you a stance break. That's rare on this thing because it moves around so much. That was a nice, easy way to finish the fight off. We didn't really get to see any of its expanded move set, which is a little upsetting. But as you can see, we got the remembrance of the regal ancestor. That can give you access to a talisman that restores FP on kill, as well as a great axe that has an area of effect debuff as its Ash of War. Both pretty good in their own right, but that is one of the remembrances that I would recommend either consuming for the runes, um, or if you were to duplicate it because you wanted both rewards for any reason, you would use one of the mausoleums without a bell because it's not a shard bearer. Yeah, Christ, so, yeah, I just hate that part of the game. But now we are heading uh, to the next part. This is the Nokaron part of this area, and um, I guess we're just heading across the kind of rooftops area, I suppose you could say. Yeah, the sort of rims around the edges of these windowed platforms here. The windows all being sealed up, so it's sort of hard to tell that they are indeed windows. As you saw, one of the silver tier enemies just uh, threw itself into the void. That happens pretty consistently if you're on that edge platform when that thing transforms. So these silver tiers can turn into other things. That's effectively what the transforming enemies that drop a level tier have done. They have gone from one thing to another and then drop level tiers. Um, but since it's just a humanoid and it has the same base moveset as any, um, any other NPC fight, so any invader, you can just ground slam it to death. It's susceptible to bleed. Um, but I yeah, just want the first to, uh, one of those that transforms flings itself into the void. It's really funny. Uh, I just want to also mention that that jump onto the little domed part and then over to the larval tier enemy, that jump is way more awkward than it looks. So just be prepared for... Do, do a bigger jump than you feel is necessary because I have died to that jump so many times. So coming into this part, we get the Black Wet Blade, which is um, very relevant. Uh, Occult, Bleed, and I think Poison Infusion are all tied to that. So we definitely want that to be able to put Bleed on uh, 
any weapon that is relevant to put bleed on. So now you can put bleed on weapons that don't have bleed. So that's pretty cool. And Or you can actually put more bleed on weapons that already have bleed sometimes as well. So, uh, Mimic Tear Ashes. This is why we immediately come here. Because now the game is shockingly easy. Uh, and if it was already easy, prepare to get a lot more fucking easy. Because the Mimic Tear is by far the best ash, uh, Spirit Ash in the game. Yeah, so, it's the best the... for a number of reasons as well. It's versatile because it has your build. So whatever build you are using, it gets a copy of it. So if you're dealing bleed, you're now dealing twice the bleed. If you're dealing frostbite, you're now dealing twice the frostbite, etc, etc. It's versatile, it's strong, it's tanky. If nothing else, it serves as a great meat shield, a good distraction. It's just... It consumes health instead of FP to summon. So it just costs a red flask instead of a blue. It ju oh, it's just the best by by every possible metric. It is the best spirit ash in the game. Yes, so that is why we are definitely doing this. Because despite the fact that we're not going to do Rani's quest, um, so we're about to pick up an item that continues Rani's quest, and despite the fact that we're not going to do that just yet, um, for reasons we mentioned in the uh, Kerry Amana episode, we're not going to do Rani's quest yet, but we are going to come here, get the item for Rani's quest, uh, because this is obviously the part of the game that is scaled for now, so we're going to do it just now. But specifically because of the Mimic tier, that is why we're coming here rather than waiting until later. So we're just leveling up our Vigor some more because it is the most important stat. I don't give a shit what anybody says, it absolutely is. And uh, picking up some more Celestial Dew, uh, Golden Rune 7. Soft cotton, that's just another crafting item. I think that thing turns into a big troll as well. Um, it does, yeah. Um, yeah. We fought a couple of enemies there. Um, in front of the Mimic tier, we fought a Nox Swordstress. Um, and beside the big ball, which drops a Laval tier when killed, it doesn't drop one every time, um, just the first time, so you can't farm it. Um, but they were Night Maidens. Yes. Now, they both have a set of drops. Do you have a list? Uh, they can drop the Night Maiden set or the Nox Swordstress set. So that's the Night Maiden crown, armor, the Nox bracelets, Nox greaves, and then the Nox set is the Nox, Sword Nox Swordstress crown, Nox Swordstress armor, Nox bracelets, Nox greaves. So effectively, they can just drop their armor sets. Uh, however, they don't drop the weapons. But we did pick up the Nox hammer thing before dropping down there anyway. The Nox Hammer is pretty fun, by the way. Um, it's affectionately nicknamed the Nutsack Hammer. We're here to upgrade the Mimic tier, by the way. And she has a new dialogue option because we've been to... I think it's because we've been to Altus. She has a new dialogue option and it relates to another NPC, the Loathsome Dung Eater at the far side of the Roundtable Hold. Um, as I said, we're upgrading the Mimic tier there, but the, the Nutsack Hammer has the big stretchy stretchy ash of war you spin the hammer over your head a couple of times it stretches out has big range flattens enemies it's actually not a bad weapon at all so if you wanted to try something out that's maybe a little more fun than dual wielding katanas that's not a bad option so now we are heading to the uh siofra aqueduct part of this area and we're about to fight one of the hardest bosses in the game actually um it's not impossible and uh, again, you could just come back here a bit later uh, because the area that this takes you to, we're not going to do until way later. So just bear that in mind. You could just do everything up to the boss and then just leave it at that point. We're going to pick up the stone sword key before we do that. And then we're going to head down to the grace. Now getting to the boss is simple enough. There is a few crucible knights, but that is absolutely nothing we can't handle. But the boss itself is a bit of a nightmare, honestly. So, but we will take you through it. There is like a little bit of a technique we do, a little bit of finesse. Yeah, there are a couple of ways to make that boss easier, and I will expound on them when, we, uh, when we're when we actually in the boss fight. But for now, we've got a couple of Crucible Knights to deal with, some items to pick up, and some Fallen Hawk Soldiers to diligently avoid. Um, <laughs> but no, when you jump down onto this aqueduct, you can see one of the Crucible Knights down there, I think. Yes, My you eyes can. aren't deceiving me. Um, this one can be tricked into falling into the void. I think we so do it. There I think it we is. Do it. 
Oh, do we actually manage it? So you see how there's gaps in the platform that we're standing on. There's big archways, big openings. If it does its phase transition, grow wings and launch into the air attack, um, it will swoop down towards you. And if you're standing in front of one of those gaps, it will swoop into the void and just die. And it's very funny. And the first what? time it happened to me, it happened by accident. <laughs> this guy is fucking hammering me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Crucible Knights are never going to not give you trouble. They're tanky, their attacks hit really hard. So yeah, if you're nope. standing in front of one of the gaps, just avoid it and goodbye. And your reward for not killing the enemy is the Crucible Horn Great Shield. Um, not bad. Sadly, despite having Shield Nash on it and having this big old horn on the front, doesn't deal piercing damage, it deals blunt. Sadly. Bastard. I and that's we picked up the Missionary's Cookbook just there. And now we have another Crucible Knight to do. We do indeed. This one is one with a spear, though. Unlike the Sword and Shield one. Is this the first spear Crucible Knight we fought? I want to say it is. Um, now, we fight we fight these much like the other Crucible Knights. Now, I got a little bit uh, full of bravado and I did die to this thing. Uh, but we do want to bait this thing down from here because if we go up to where it is and fight it, a bunch of those uh, Fallen Hawk soldiers show up. Um, as, and as I said, can, we're going to try yeah. and diligently avoid them. <laughs> um, so the spear one has much the same moveset, except instead of being a sweep, that's a slam. Um, and it has more horizontal attacks than, than vertical. Um, so just when it comes it, to these guys... Oh, uh, I'm just gonna, when it comes to these guys, just stick to the game plan. Don't get fancy. Do the, do the ass slams. Stagger it. Get your counter hits in. Roll away, heal. Don't yeah. get fancy. Yeah, for sure. We don't have the Ash of War that completely trivializes them yet, but when we do get that and put it on the appropriate weapon, God, it's funny. Oh, it's, it's so fucking funny. funny <laughs> because they literally can't kill you. <laughs> it's fucking amazing and I love it. Um, anywho, we have actually sort of encountered a spear one before because in the Spirit Caller Cave in Leonia, the Spirit Caller Snail summons right, one yeah, with a spear. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't actually fight it, we just ran away and hit an invisible snail. But so, we then... get a Golden Rune 13, and we also got Order Healing, which uh, cures you of your death plight, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't... Well, well, it cures you of your death blight build-up, because it can't cure you of death blight, because once it does build up, you just automatically die. So, it just gets rid, it just gets rid of the, the, the meter going up. Yeah, which is why I personally don't think it's that useful. I'd much rather have the what is it, rejuvenating boluses. Uh, yeah, I suppose, um, but that is a that is a consumable. You might not have it to hand. True. Um, you do get the ability to craft them eventually, but the ingredients are kind of rare. Um, and death like doesn't pop up often enough that it's a problem. So there are a couple of sections of the game though where death like is a real problem. But yeah. we have ways of avoiding that when those areas crop up. So, yep, some more Fallen Hawk soldiers. Dying ass slam, though. Thankfully, we can just pull an ass slam out of our ass when we need to um, in order to not die to being incredibly ganked. <laughs> <laughs> Airmailing just five guys under a waterfall at your fat bossy. Aye. Um. <laughs> So, getting our Smith and Stone 4, and now we are about to talk to Dee's brother. Yeah, so, remember I was saying we have this Swish armor set that looks really cool? Yeah, now we don't, because we just gave it to Dee's brother in exchange yeah. for a gesture. And by doing this, so progressing for his quest before coming here, you have that option. And once you've given him that armor, you now have the ability to summon D, Hunter of the Dead, despite the fact that he is dead. Oh, oh. Well, it's obviously oh, his brother that um, we're summoning, but... I don't spoil it. That's just really <laughs> fun. Uh... So, um, what we done here was die immediately. Um, and there, was, there is a reason for doing that, actually, now that I think about it. To get your flasks and such back before... That was it! Off. Yes, yes. So we're going to die. That way we, we have, we're have we full healed right in front of the boss because uh, we can just go straight to the Stake America. Uh, remember to pick your... Your runes up, if you have any amount that you care about. But otherwise, when it comes to this boss, we want to make sure we've got our. Uh, we, strictly speaking, we should have uh, used 
our physic flask and golden vow before coming in here. But we're going to be using bloody slash for this boss because it is our ash of war that does the most single hit damage. Uh, there is obviously better ashes of war, uh, but the problem is is that these guys have a huge amount of poise. So trying to um, trying to stagger them with ash slam isn't a great option. Not only that, they they move about a lot and are way harder to hit than they should be, uh, considering their fucking size. So bloody slash is the best alternative here because it has massive sweeping attacks, so it's quite easy to hit them with. But the technique here is to kill one of these things before the other one shows up. Um, so yeah, you really don't want to be fighting two of these at the same time uh, in close proximity. So although the other one did show up, we had just enough time to finish it off before they, start, they, they meet up and then they become fucking impossible. And a cool bonus is we have a little bit of Mimic tier left, so that's that's quite cool. So, a um, couple of things to take into account for this. As we said, you want to kill one before the other one shows up, so your best way to do that, since the other one spawns at the very far end of the arena, which you'll see in a minute is absolutely massive, you want to fight the first one as close to the fog gate as you can get, because that gives you the most time to kill it. Yes. The gargoyles are weaker to blunt damage, so striking damage from hammers and great hammers. They are... Uh, I think they have even defenses to all magic. The only thing they are weakest to is strike, but they are weaker to magical damage than they are to physical, so casters will actually have an easier time. You can, in fact, uh, kind of cheese them. There are rocks you can jump up on on the waterfall back there. Not in this corner, but in the opposite corner. Um, where they can't really hit you, but it's not very consistent. So using the method we've shown is probably your best bet. Jumping in that coffin will take you to the top of the waterfall to a new area, Deep Root Depths, where we're basically grabbing the grace and then fucking off. Now, what I would suggest is if you're having, if you're struggling against that boss, really the best alternative would be just get to the boss and then do it before we do Deep Root Depths because you'll be more than properly equipped at that point. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for Nocron and Seal for Aqueduct. And okay, there we go. That's Nocron and Seal for Aqueduct. Done. Join us in part 22, where we're going to be doing Altus Plateau. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.